This tutorial is on Leonardo I. No intro, let's get right into it. If you don't have an account, go to their website and join their Discord. There you'll find their intro video on how to join. It'll take a few days, then you'll get the invite. Now that Leonardo A has whitelisted us, and we're in, I'm going to show you around. The panel on the left shows several options. First is the home panel where you can see featured AI models and recent creations from other creators and more creations from people in the community feed tab. And this is a free AI model to use and we'll get into the free versus paid in a little bit. Your personal feed is all the creations that you've made and we will review training and data sets and fine tune models later in the video. These are great tools for creating your artwork. But first, we'll start off with image generation right here, in the left panel, and then we'll get into the other features that makes Leonardo I.O. so awesome. Wow. I'll start off with the fact that this is free, and you are currently allotted 150 coins per day. For art generation per image, you generally make 4 images per generation, so it may begin to add up, but it's still a good number of free generations per day, for an I art generator. First off you have your positive and negative prompts. Keep in mind if you add a negative prompt, it'll cost you a few more coins to use. Also if you use your negative prompt, you can add these to emphasize the importance on negative prompts. The bot may or may not use some of these, but it may be better to emphasize them to avoid extra fingers, mutated body parts, or extra limbs as AI art is known to add on. Here you can choose the number of images you wish to generate per prompt. Generally it's 4 but if you increase the image dimensions here, it may decrease the number of images to 2. You can also change the aspect ratio here if you want a square, portrait or landscape type image. Next we have the guidance scale. This is a scale of how strongly your prompt wording is weighed into the image. This is generally best at 7 to 10, but try 7 first before you scale up or down. In other words, the lower the number the more stable diffusion will drift and experiment with your prompt, but that may add a desirable effect to your image. On the other end, if you increase the scale to 10 or more it could bring details closer to your wording. Just play with the scale to your liking. Next we have the prompt magic option, which takes your prompts and will refine them into something more understandable to stable diffusion, to possibly give you a better result. You can also use uploaded images to influence your new prompted images here, but we will get back to that in a minute. Now let's show you a really cool feature that you'll use quite often. The models shown here and in the Fine Turn Models tab are all pre-made art styles that you can use to build your artwork. These are models trained by Leonardo I and a few vetted professionals but you can find some really cool styles in the community tab as well. These are models that have been created and trained by community members like us. You also have your models tab where you'll find any models you have made and the favorite models tab for any models you have favorited and use on a regular basis. So now let's say we want to use one of these models to create some artwork. So let's go over what's on our screen. When you select a model, You'll see a description about the model, and you'll be able to see community images created by this model, so you can see examples, and if this model would fit your image style or not. The training resolution is the resolution image size that the model is trained on, and it will probably produce the best results. With this specific resolution, you may change the resolution if you wish, but may not be best for optimal results, but you can always try and experiment with it. Now if you're using this you can click generate with this model, but we're going to click on one of the community images that was generated with this model, so we can get some tips on how they prompted the stable diffusion AI. First you will see the user that created this artwork, and you can follow them if you want to see more of their art or their prompting. Next you'll see exactly how they prompted stable diffusion to generate this image, and can give you inspiration on prompt wording for yours. You'll also see their negative prompts, from what details they didn't want stable diffusion to generate like extra heads, or the character being out of frame. You can also use some of these to remember for your future projects. You can also remix the image to see what result you get, from the same prompt and generation settings. You can copy the prompt text or you can use image to image, which where this image will be used in your image generator. So you can make different variations of this photo. The guidance scale that we mentioned before, 
was how closely stable diffusion will follow your prompt, which here is a 7. And then we have step count, which is the number of times that stable diffusion looks at the image. As it's generating it, you can find these in your image generator tool. We also have the sampler, or scheduler, which changes how noise affects the image. You can play around with the different settings to see which one fits your image best. Last we have the specific upscale tool that they used, which allows you to take the your generated image and upscale it to define more detail, or slightly change its look, but we'll work on that in a minute. But that's enough of that, let's go generate an image. Now we're going to create a cyberpunk and Blade Runner star New York City with the Empire State Building in front. We'll show stable diffusion to point one as our model and Leonardo style. No negative prompts right now. I like this one, let's talk about upscaling and editing your image. Leonardo AI has many editing options that many other AI art programs don't offer. There are four main upscales that you can use, and if you hover over them, you'll get a description as to what they do to your image specifically, and I'll show you all of their effects. Another great feature that Leonardo AI has is that you can remove the background right here in the art generator. Now let's start upscaling and show you the different versions. You can see we use the clear HD upscale and it gives a slightly different look. Now if we try the creative upscale it gives much cleaner lines, slightly less grain and almost a smooth painting stroke detail but it looks very nice. Next we have alternate upscale which gives us a nice upscaled image as far as details go and doesn't blur any of the small light details, especially in the street reflections. There's HD Smooth Upscaler, but this one works better with a focused subject, such as a portrait. A very interesting feature that Leonardo AI has is the unzoom feature. This allows you to zoom out a little bit if you want a little more landscape around the image that you already have. Not to worry, I know it looks a little messed up on some spots. The bottom and left side need touching up, but the top is beautiful. It looks like tall buildings that are supposed to be there. Now let's fix the other spots, so we can make a cohesive whole image. Click out to the side of the image and go back to the home screen. Now we'll go to the AI canvas, and this is a really cool tool for many reasons. Let's dive in. First off, let's add our image and make sure to choose the zoomed out version of our image. Now in the canvas editor, we're going to select the mask tool, so we can draw specific areas that we want to prompt and fix. We're going to move this square down, because the AI is gathering information from here to use with your prompt. Just make sure you have a good amount of the square in the area you want the AI to pull from, and our prompt is going to be matched with the street above it. So now, you'll get four different results that you can scan through. You can either select the one that fits the best, press generate again to get more options, or you can edit your prompt if you think that will give you a better outcome. We're going to press accept on this because it looks good with the rest of the street. Now we'll move the square over and try the same prompt and look through our options. Next we'll fix the left side building and that looks much better. And I wanted to change this taxi car into a more futuristic cyberpunk blade runner type vehicle so I used the mask to and prompted the bot to formulate it. Great, that looks really good. Now this is something you may end up using a lot. Increase your box size and leave half of the box on the image so we can create a wider image to help zoom out even more. Well that's amazing. As I mentioned before you can use an image to influence your art creation Simply go to the left panel in the Art Generation tool, and you can either choose Image to Image, or Image to Prompt. We're going to choose Image to Image here. You can use pre-existing prompted images, to further sculpt your new images this way. Using my same or similar prompt from before, I'll use this to sculpt new images with different models. Well that looks great. So if you want to create your own models, and train your own bot on the art styles that you like you can go to the training and data sets tab on the left panel of the home screen. Here you'll create and name your data set and be sure to name and describe it specifically so if you make it public, others will know what to expect from your model. Now to train your model you'll need to either upload or choose 15 images that represent the style of image you are looking at training your model after and make sure they are the same dimensions. If you want a Dragon Ball Z style art, then upload 15 different images of Dragon Ball Z art, with the same dimensions to train your model, or any other art style that you prefer. 
Just know that it may take a little bit for your model to be trained and you can check on your job status here. I hope this tutorial was a great help to you. Let me know your tips and tricks in the comment section below. I have a mobile app for iOS and Android that allows you to connect your bank account to your credit card and automatically pay credit card charges as you make them so you can gain the cash rewards and you don't keep the debt. This allows you to use your credit card like a debit card so you're not racking up debt and on top of that paying interest on that debt every month. It will be available in April or May but we will have an announcement for the launch on our social media Instagram, TikTok and of course here on YouTube so subscribe to our channel to be notified for the launch of our app. Thank you and see you in the next video.